Hey all, Neil from the Overclocker magazine, and today we've got Kingston's finest, the Fury Renegade Limited Edition DDR5 8000 kit. While we have many DDR5 8000 kits on the market, the Fury Renegade LE comes in a rare configuration of DDR5 8000 CL364848 at 1.45 volts. Now, most Hynix 8 die kits that are 8000 are CL38 at 1.45 volts, and M die kits are either CL40 or CL38 as well, but at 1.45 volts are found. Naturally, one of the things that make the Kingston Limited Edition memory stand out is that it comes in two ticks lower than the typical A or M die 8000 memory. Where 48 gits are concerned, this is the lowest CAT latency I have found to date. It would be easy to say that the additional 50 millivolts added to the memory is what allows CL36, but that actually isn't the case. I tried with at least two other high-end M die kits, both easily capable of DDR5 8000 CL38, but they could only achieve CL36 at 1.5 volts and couldn't do it at 1.45. That being said, for a 48 gigabyte kit, the memory is rather expensive. And with the impending increase in DRAM pricing, I'd suggest you get this one now instead of later if you are interested, that is. For pricing, you're looking at around 350 US dollars or 7,800 at Woodware. You can get the regular Kingston Fury Renegade 8000 CL38 memory for about 1000 less at Woodware. However, that's 32 gigabytes, and in light of that, the limited edition memory for just 1000 more seems to be a real bargain. Pricing aside though, Kingston has done more than set up a single XMP profile, but actually included two others as well for DDR5 7200 CL38 and DDR5 6400 CL32. The 7200 CL38 profile is rather puzzling, given that CL34 4444 7200 works just fine and is completely stable even at 50 millivolts less than what the XMP profile dictates. What I found even more fascinating though is that DDR5 5600 CL263636 at 1.4 volts works just fine. And so does DDR5 5800 at the exact same timings. However, you just have to go up a little bit to the factory default of 1.45 volts. Now, I may have tested on an Intel platform and specifically on the ROG Z790 Apex Encore. But with the launch of the Ryzen 9000 series, DDR5 5600 is as relevant as it's ever been. And at CL26, it is mighty fast despite the low transaction rate. As such, you'll see that in the benchmarks that follow, I have DDR5 5600 at CL26 of course, XMP 7200 and 8200 CL36. I have many reasons to believe that this memory can do 8600, 8800 plus no problem. However, I neither have the AMD board capable of this yet or an Intel CPU with an IMC up to the task. That shouldn't deter you, however, because CL368200 is very fast, and much like DDR5 5800CL26, you can do it at the factory default 1.45 volts. So, why am I stickler for this 1.45 volts when memory can easily tolerate 1.5 volts and some kits even retail at this voltage? Well, that's because, as you can see, during the stress tests, Temperatures can and do reach 60 degrees in a closed case. As such, these are more representative of what you'll be able to experience and a better reflection of the memory capabilities than the numbers that I would necessarily generate on an open test bench. Anyway, let's jump into the benchmarks and see what the Kingston Fury Renegade Limited Edition Kit can do. Now, testing was done on the ROG Z790 Apex Encore using an Intel Core i7-14700K inside the Montec King95 Pro chassis all powered by the Montec Titan Gold 1kW PSU and of course everything is available at Woodware. First up we have IDA64 memory bandwidth. From DDR5 5600 to 8200 we gain a staggering 36GB a second of memory bandwidth and even from the XMP settings we can increase effective bandwidth by using the much tighter CL34-7200 setting. It's free and works on just about every single LGA 1700 motherboard in existence today. So you don't need a special DDR5 8000 capable board to exploit the exceptional quality of the ICs on the Kingston memory. Next, we have latency. And of course, it scales as you'd expect. Ideally, I can and should be well under 50 nanoseconds at 8200, but that's nothing sub timings can sort out. That being said, from XMP to the max OC, you can reduce latency by 14 nanoseconds, which is massive within the context of memory. We then get to Geekbench 6, and once again, we see good scaling, but not as much as IDA64 would have suggested. We do, however, still see a 2000 point increase from DDR5 5600 CL26 to CL36 at 8200. 
Geekbench 3 memory score remains the most obvious way to see the memory subsystem efficiency. And here we see that the super tight CL26 settings at 5600 are dangerously close to what you get at XMP. So tuning the sub timings can, and in many instances, make up for the lack of speed or frequency. Y-Cruncher 2.5B at 8200 should again be just under 50 seconds, but even now at 51 seconds, it shows some good scores and scaling compared to the 5600 setting. 7200 with tight timings proving once again to be the most balanced setting of all. The V-Ray 6 benchmark is one benchmark that doesn't quite have enough bandwidth at 5600 CL26, but once that bottleneck is alleviated, further gains in memory performance result in diminishing returns, if any at all. As you can see, 7200 CL34 is nearly identical in performance to 8200 CL36. SuperPi 32M goes further and places the 7200 CL34 result above all others, and by some margin as well. 7200 once again seems to strike the perfect balance between raw bandwidth and latency. 7th benchmark is another one where the XMP settings almost lost to DDR5 5600 CL26. But then when the board isn't left to its own auto training rules for memory, plenty of performance can be added to the system, even at a lower frequency as you can see. Handbrake, being a more real world test, shows that there's essentially no difference between DDR5 8200 CL36 and 7200 CL34, both easily beating the XMP and DDR5 5600 settings. We finally get to the gaming benchmarks, where we will focus on the 1% lows, especially because at Full HD, I'm GPU limited despite using a very capable ROG Strix GeForce RTX 4080. In Hitman, there's practically zero difference in performance between all settings, with just DDR5 5600 having the lowest median frame rate. Then, in Forza Horizon 5, we're facing GPU limitation here as well, so there's not much difference in the results. In Cyberpunk 2077, however, we see massive gains in the 1% lows, where we actually see XMP beating the tuned DDR5 7200 CL34 setting, which I was sure would lead in the gaming performance numbers. Last, we get to Dying Light 2, and despite repeated runs, for some reason, 8200 CL36 is unusually fast when it comes to the lowest 1%. There's nothing between the various results other than that, but for some reason, the 1% lows on the 8200 CL36 settings stand out. With the benchmarks done, you can see that this memory offers a lot of versatility. Usually, with 24GB MDI, I found that you have to target frequency more so than timings for improving performance. But the Kingston memory and the ICs on the memory, of course, revel in tighter timings more so than the usual MDI kits I've come across. The Renegade Limited Edition memory can do all these settings that I've shown here, frequencies and more. So you don't have to necessarily choose between the frequency or timings that I've used here. You can literally do anyone and everything in between. Before I close, I have to say that even when testing on AMD's latest 9000 series platform on a budget board like the ROG Strix B650EF Gaming, DDR5 8400 can actually get into Windows and run a few benchmarks, however, it isn't stable. Only 8000 works and at 8000 it works flawlessly. Anyway, that's it from me about the Kingston Fury Renegade DDR5 Limited Edition Memory Kit. I think there's still plenty left in this memory and I plan on revisiting it sooner rather than later on Intel's next gen platform where I know for sure it'll do even better than what it did here. Visually, the memory may not be for everyone, and in fact, I personally prefer the looks of the non-limited edition memory that I reviewed last, but I know some people actually prefer this design and find it more to their liking. Either way, we can all agree that the performance and performance potential of this memory is incredible. That being said, let me know what you guys think of the Kingston Fury Renegade limited edition memory in the comments below. And until the next time, remember to do the usual YouTube stuff, share, like, subscribe, and all of that. I've been Neo. This memory has been great. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you on the flip side. And peace.